This is the last week to donate warm undergarments for the Ministry with Community Underwear Party that is happening next week. Due to the new restrictions with the virus starting on Monday, December 7th and running through Friday, December 11th, Ministry with Community will be celebrating Underwear Week. From 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. each day, they will be accepting your donations of warm clothing items at their back door. I'm Andrea Allen, and I will be taking all of the PUCC donations down on Monday, December 7th. The great news is we have 126 items to donate. Wouldn't it be great if we could get that to 200 Warm underwear, hats, gloves, and scarves could make a world of difference to someone trying to survive a harsh Michigan winter out on the streets. Just place your donations in the shed on the right in the back parking lot of the church. Also, we will be there to collect donations when you come to pick up your luminaries for Advent on December 5th. Give the gift of warmth this Christmas. Thank you. And welcome to worship with Portage United Church of Christ this day. Whatever day you are here, we are glad that you are joining us. The season of Advent begins this week, so we begin our new worship series, I Believe Even When. It's based on the words of an anonymous Jewish poet that were found scrawled on the wall in a concentration camp during World War II. Those words were, I believe in the sun, even when the sun isn't shining. Those words and our theme for our series remind us that even though we live in a world that so often calls us, tempts us, encourages us to respond out of fear and with violence, we, as people of faith, are called to respond from our place of transformation and our experience of reconciliation in Christ. So over the course of these next weeks, we will be examining our call to respond with the hope, the love, the joy, and the peace that the coming of Christ brings to our lives and to this world. Let us prepare now our hearts, our minds, our bodies, and our spirits for worship. Come, O oh, come, Emmanuel, come. Come, O oh, come, Emmanuel, come. O oh, come, O oh, come, Emmanuel, come. Come, O oh, come, Emmanuel, come. And ransom captivity is right. Welcome. 
hope. I believe in the sun, even when it's not shining. The place without light, the depth of night, the pit of unknowing. I believe in the sun, even when it's not shining. This Advent, we are looking to hear words of comfort, of challenge, and of good news. The prophet Isaiah and the four gospel authors were writing at a time when people desperately needed to hear all of these as well. This first week, Isaiah the prophet and Mark the gospel writer reassure the people that good news is beginning. And yet they both say, make yourself ready, raise your voices, change your hearts, get ready to be transformed, because now is the time. Let us embrace hope that we can do what needs to be done to bring more light into the world. Let us pray. Holy One, we thank you for the glimpses we catch of your gift of untiring hope even in the midst of fear, of challenge, of struggle, even when our view is obscured by clouds of doubt, ignite the flame of hope within us that, that we, we might glow, glow with, with its, its brilliance from, from the, the inside, inside out. out. Amen. Amen. Rejoice, 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 Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken.
the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, see, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This Sunday is the beginning of Advent which, by the way, is the beginning of the church year. So what better way to begin Advent, to begin the church year, than with the words that begin the Gospel of Mark, the beginning of the good news of Jesus the Christ, the Son of God. We should also probably note here that Mark truly is the beginning because his gospel was the first of all four to actually get written down. So that's a lot of beginnings to end the year 2020, which I think you'd probably agree with me was one decade of a church year. Now, while Mark's gospel lacks all the beautiful angelic visions that Luke's gospel begins with, and it doesn't have the extensive genealogy that Matthew's gospel begins with, nor does it have that cosmic pre-existence that, that John starts out with, there is something truly tantalizing about beginning your book with this pronouncement, the beginning of the good news of Jesus the Christ. I mean, it really puts you on the edge of your seat, dying to hear more. But perhaps you're like me, and you might find that your excitement wanes a bit once you hear where all this good news actually begins. In the wilderness. The wilderness. That place where the Hebrew children wandered for 40 years before finally getting to the promised land. That place where Jesus went without food and was tempted for 40 days by Satan. That place that's not fit for human habitation, but rather is the home of demons and the place of darkness and despair. The good news begins with the voice of one crying in the wilderness. In the wilderness with a guy dressed in camel's hair, held together by a leather belt, and who has a plate of locusts and honey nearby for his evening meal. Not particularly an auspicious beginning for anything, let alone good news. But the really surprising part here, at the beginning of Mark's story of the good news, is that the people flock to the wilderness in droves to hear the voice of this wild man crying in the wilderness. People from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him, Mark tells us. This is fascinating to me. People were willingly entering the wilderness to experience this beginning of the good news, to prepare, to repent. 
Now these days, we're accustomed to thinking of the wilderness as a metaphor for something challenging that we must go through, something we must endure before we get to that fresh beginning on the other side. Like that wilderness of seventh grade, or whichever grade in school was your worst, that we have to endure before we can begin again in the next year of school. Or that wilderness of unemployment, the wilderness of grief after a loss. These types of wildernesses that we tough out on our own or traverse with the help of therapists or support groups until we one day find ourselves at the door to a new beginning. Or this wilderness of COVID quarantine that we find ourselves in now. We're all tired of enduring this and can't wait for that beginning point called new normal. But what if the beginning is happening right now in this wilderness? What if in this wilderness here of political dysfunction and global pandemics, the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ is germinating, sprouting right now in our midst. We love to prepare for December 25th, to prepare for all our baking, prepare our shopping lists, prepare our house and get the decorations out. The problem is we get so caught up in preparing for December 25th that we never actually take the time to prepare the way of the Lord, to prepare for the birth of the Christ, not the birthday of Jesus, to prepare for the birthing of the Christ in our midst, to prepare for the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. So this year, as we are all so justifiably disappointed that we will not get to prepare for December 25th the way we've done for always, this year, I'd say it's time we stay in this wilderness and do as they did in Mark's day. Repent. Not in the sackcloth and ashes way, but in the way of the Greek word that we translate as repent, metanoia, it means beyond thought. It means to open our hearts and our minds beyond how we've always thought about our relationships, our values, our ways of being in the world. It means to open our hearts and our minds beyond how we've always thought about what it means to prepare for Christmas and to instead begin thinking about preparing for the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ. This Advent season and beyond I invite you to come with me to this wilderness and repent. Let us open our hearts and our minds beyond our expectations for December 25th. Let us truly prepare for the good news of Jesus Christ that is beginning right now in this wilderness. And then, my friends, we will become the creative and imaginative people of God we are called to be, a people filled with hope.
This first Sunday of Advent, we begin not only the journey toward Christmas, but an inward journey as well. And while we may experience connection and the warmth of God's light and relationship with the divine and even a holy rest, oftentimes these inward journeys are riddled with doubt, frustration, uncertainty, and maybe even just a dash of anxiety. And yet, even in the depths of our doubt, any time we are able to love, any time we are able to show concern for one another, stranger or familiar, any time we are able to smile, any time we're able to name that we don't even know where God is in the midst of it all, means that we believe that God is there even when. And this phrase, even when, can be just as powerful a prayer as any other. So today, I'm going to offer petitions to God. And these petitions will start with, I believe even when. And after each petition, I invite you to say aloud, hear our prayer. So please, join with me in an attitude of prayer. I believe even when the days are short and the snowfall is heavy. I believe even when the sun shines and we know we are far from winter's end. I believe even when we must continue to be apart for the safety of those we love. I believe even when our work and service in the name of justice and love is exhausting. I believe even when the path of discipleship is unclear. And as we continue on these inward journeys, let us walk and pray with the words that are so familiar to so many of us, the words that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, thine is the power, and thine is the glory forever and ever. Amen.
One of the features of our worship series is going to be a carol of resistance. Each week, we will tell the story of a very familiar carol with a perhaps not so familiar origin story that's rooted in tragedy and sorrow or perhaps resistance to war and oppression. These carols are a reminder to us of the power of music and song to express our soul's deepest longings for God's peace and God's love to reign among us, even though there are powers that work so fiercely against it. Our carol this week is, I Heard the Bells on Christmas Day. The words were written by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, at Harvard on Christmas of 1863, in the height of the Civil War. His wife had died tragically in a fire, and he had just received word that his son was wounded, serving as a soldier in the Union Army. He heard the sound of the bells and began to write, spurred on by his sorrow at the state of humankind. And in despair I bowed my head, there is no peace on earth, I said, for hate is strong and mocks the song of peace on earth, goodwill to all. And yet, hope wins out as he pens the fourth verse. Then pealed the bells more loud and deep, God is not dead, nor doth God sleep. The wrong shall fail, the right prevail, with peace on earth, goodwill to all. Please join us in singing our carol of resistance.
Thank you for being in worship with us this week. Hear now these words of benediction. We wait for justice, but we do not wait to work for change. We wait for restored health, but we do not wait to work to heal. We wait for wholeness, but we do not wait to work at binding up brokenness. We wait for peace, but we do not wait to work to eliminate hatred. And so, my friends, like bells ringing out the news that the sun is still shining even on cloudy days, fill the night left with sadness with messages of hope. Go into your lives humming the tunes that keep hope alive in you and that spur you on in your work of justice and reconciliation. Please now raise your voices and repeat after me. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Amen. Come, oh, come, Emmanuel, come.